This is a video showing an overview of the uh, power control cabinet for my Spark Gap Tesla coil. And I'll just explain each part of it as I can. Uh, starting at the top, we have uh, on the left the power input section and on the right the power output section. Uh, there's usually a difference because of power factor, resistance, and other things. But on the left, we have a amp meter on the top, AC amp meter, up to 50 amps. On the bottom, there's a volt meter, you know, 0 to 300 volts, normally 240 volts. The input to the cabinet's 240 volts. And then on the right, is this identical setup but for power out. Uh, there's an ammeter and a voltmeter. Then moving down, these are the switches that really control the thing. There's a high voltage enable on the left which is keyed. See I can turn it on and off. I can take the key with me just to keep uh, overly curious kids from hurting themselves. Uh, then there's an engagement switch here, and I can turn a cooling fan on if I need it. You can hear it running. And there's an emergency stop switch here. All I have to do is just smash it if something bad happens. And I also have capability for a remote emergency stop switch. This is the jack for it. Um, I haven't ever used that, but it's here if I ever want to use it. And then moving down, this is the uh, phase control for the rotary spark gap. Uh, this is the motor current right here, the motor voltage, and you know obviously power on and off. I can enable or disable the phase control, and I adjust the phase angle with this variac right here from 0 to 90 degrees. And moving down again, this is the variac section. It's a, the largest uh, general radio 240 volt variac control here. Uh, circuit breaker for the auxiliary power. We have an auxiliary power, just 120 volts. I just have some accessory I want to run. Here's the mains breaker. And here is an ammeter for power factor correction current. So when I turn power, corrector, power correction factor on, I can see exactly how much current is being used for power factor correction. That's useful to know sometimes. And then down here is a switch for enabling and disabling power factor correction. That uh, opens and closes a contactor in the back, which I'll show you in a minute. Then on the very bottom is the cooling fan, which I turned on earlier. Uh, so now, um, let me move around to the back so we can look inside. Try and move slowly so that the autofocus doesn't go crazy on the camera. Okay, so I'll pull back, you know. So here it is, standard 19 inch rack. Open the door. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in here. Kind of move it from top to bottom. We'll go over it. Start at the top. So the top tray, there's a lot of wiring all over here, and the wiring is kind of distributed around, but mainly what's on the top tray are EMI filters and the uh, ammeter and voltmeters I showed you earlier. You can see the backs. And then this huge contactor here, 
this is what actually you know applies power to the Tesla coil. Then moving down to the next level, this is uh, those are the front panel switches you can see the back of there. And then there's a power supply for the contactor, a small DC power supply. And then a lot of wiring and you know junctions and things. And then you know this is the box that contains the rotary spark gap phase control. And then moving down to the next level, this is the control for the power factor corruption. And I can select different values of capacitance with these switches. I've already determined, you know, what I need for my pole transformer and uh, Tesla coil. And moving down again, another tray. Um, you know, there's the contactor for the power factor control. And here's a nice switch I can use to enable and disable or bypass and connect um, the ballast, which I'll show you in a minute. Never, never have had a need to do that, but it's there. And then on the very bottom level, you can see the, uh, the ballast. This is an air gap ballast that I made. It weighs about 100 pounds. It's kind of hard to see from here, but it's on the very bottom because it's the most massive thing. And then you can see on the side, all these wires, they're all very neatly bundled together. You know, they run all the way up to the different levels and, you know, get distributed around. This power supply, or this power control cabinet, was made to supply 40 amps, up to 40 amps, at 240 volts. I could go more with some very slight modifications, but that's the limit of my circuit breaker on my out, on my uh, wall, so that's what I designed it for. Let me close this back up. Move back around to the side here. Of course, there's two wires or cables that come out of this thing. This is the 240 volt, well, 0 to 240 that goes to the pole transformer. This is the connector. And this is the 120 volt power supply for the rotary spark gap. So that's what that's for. I think I covered everything. One last thing I'll mention is I'll leave it up to the viewer to determine where that name comes from. Illudium Q36 Space Modulator. That's all.